Hey everyone, I'm sorry it's taken me longer than planned to get around to this video. It was meant to be a fairly direct follow-up to Ashlyn Goengesa and that didn't happen because my life is chaos and I'm a disaster human. So sorry, but I'm here now. This is Seraglaglacon Cullen, which is the wasting sickness of Cuchulain. As you will know if you've been watching my other videos, this is not the first example of wasting sickness we've had on this channel. We've had Ashlyn Goengesa, which follows the classic pattern of man seeing a beautiful woman in a dream and pining away from her. But if you look further back to the first video I told this year, which was Toch Vacheden, you will see that there was wasting sickness in that one as well. Again, that was a more classic love sickness type thing. As you'll see in this one, it's a bit different. One thing I learned while researching this video is that the wasting sickness of Kukhalan is actually a surprisingly complicated text, and I don't know it nearly as well as I thought I did. And one of the ways it's complicated is that there's two distinct versions of the story, but the one we have is like a, a patchwork of the two. There's a great article by Gregory Toner that analyzes the differences between them and how they portray desire and the character motivations, so I'll put a link to that in the description if you want to read some actual analysis. But I should explain that the biggest difference between the versions is that they can't agree on who Cuchulain's wife is. The text is also known by a longer title, The Wasting Sickness of Cuchulain and the Only Jealousy of Ever. The thing is, this is kind of significant because actually his wife is not Ever the whole way through. Sometimes it is Ethna. So you're just gonna have to work with me on this one because it gets a little bit complicated and confusing when his wife keeps changing. It's also too long a text to do in one video, so this is gonna be two videos, and this first video will be primarily focusing on the half of the story where Cuchulain's wife is Ethna, who I'm not sure if we encounter elsewhere. Also, before we start, there is a translation of this story in Gant's Early Irish Myths and Sagas, so I'll put a link to that in the description. It's not actually the one I used while writing this because I was switching between like four different ones, but that is probably the most easy accessible one. Also, just disclaimer with Gantz, I would just ignore his introductions because they're quite outdated and generally inaccurate, but the, the translations themselves are mostly fine, just ignore the introductions. Anyway, that's enough of that. So the story starts at Samhain, as many of them do, that's Halloween, and the men of Ulster, the Ullath, are having a festival. They're in Magmathemna, which is the part of Ulster particularly associated with Cuchulain, and they are recounting all of the heroic adventures they've had in the past year and all of the enemies they've killed. In fact, they bring forth the tongues of every man they've killed because this is the trophy that they take, and some of them are padding out the numbers with the tongues of animals and so on. And while they tell these stories, they have their swords lying across their laps. But if they lie, if they embellish too much, the sword will turn on them and attack them for their lie. And the story tells us this wasn't that unusual in those days. Swords were just like that. No biggie. Sentient swords that have demons in them, apparently. All of the Ullav are at the festival, but Connell and Fergus are running late, so when the others are like, come on, let's get on with it, Cuchulain is like, no, we have to wait for Connell and Fergus, because I like them, they're my friends. So Seneca suggests that they pass the time with fifth curls, songs, and jugglers. So they do. And while they're doing this, a beautiful flock of birds flies down and hovers over the lake, and all of the women of Ulster are like, oh my god, I gotta have those birds. As pets? As feathers? That's not really clear. But they all start boasting about how great their husbands are at catching birds. Ethna Etenkathra, who is the wife of Conquerver, everyone is called Ethna at this part of the story, expresses her desire to have two birds, one on each shoulder. Same, say all the women. But Ethna Ingobai, who is Cuchulain's wife, apparently, says that if anyone should get the birds, she should get them first. Because she's Cuchulain's wife. Apparently. Well, what are we going to do about it then? Ask all the women. At which point we encounter Levacham. And you may remember her from Longest MacMichelin, which I told here a couple of months ago. But here she volunteers to take a message from the women to Cuchulain to ask him to come bird catching. Cuchulain is not thrilled about this. He doesn't really want to hunt birds today and he asks if they can ask someone else because he's busy. And when I say he asks, I mean he has a go at Levacam who is just like, look, dude, don't be angry about it. The reason they're asking you is because they love you. Or haven't you noticed how they all blind themselves? Because, she says, the women of Ulster used to take it upon themselves to resemble the man they loved, adopting their blemishes and imperfections. So if they loved Conor Cuernach, they walked crookedly. If they loved Cuscrub Mend, who is the stammerer and son of Conquerver, they pretended to stammer. And if they loved Cuchulain, they would blind one eye to resemble his transformation during the rear stride in which one of his eyes gets pulled back into his head and one goes really big. It's it's a thing. So Cuchulain can't really say no to that, so he gives in and tells Loy to harness the chariot, get it all ready. Together they go out bird hunting, which appears to involve just full-on lobbing a sword at the birds. So that suggests the women of Ulster aren't actually looking for them as pets because they don't seem to care if they survive, they just want the feathers or whatever. And they knock all the birds out of the sky and distribute them among the women, but there are none left for Ethna. You're mad at me, aren't you? Says Cuchulain. No, I'm not mad, says Ethna. 
all of these women love you, but they don't get to have you. Let them have their birds, because I'm the only one who's got you. Okay, but still, don't be mad at me, says Helen, because if we see any more beautiful birds, I'm getting them for you. The most, the most beautiful, they'll be yours. Now, not long after this, they see two birds flying over the lake, linked together by a golden chain. The birds sing a gentle song that sends all the men in the vicinity to sleep. And Cuchelan gets up, he's like, I'm going hunting. Wait, say Loic and Ethna, there's something weird and otherworldly about these birds. I really don't think you should hunt them. There will be other birds. Don't be ridiculous, says Cuchelan. Give me my slingshot. So Loic passes him his slingshot and he aims at the birds but he misses. He tries again and misses again, and Cuchelan is understandably pretty upset by this. Not because he's lost the birds, but because he has never missed a shot before in his life. The fact that he's missed today seems like a sign that something terrible is gonna happen, and he slightly freaks out about it. So he picks up his spear and throws it, and the spear goes through one of the birds' wings. But they fly away. Cuchelan leaves too. He goes off in a sulk and sits with his back against a standing stone, still vaguely pissed off about the whole thing, and falls asleep. While he's asleep, two women come to him. One of them's wearing green and one's wearing purple, and the woman in green approaches him, laughing, and begins to whip him with a horsewhip. The one in purple then approaches, also laughing at him, and also begins to whip him. Between the two of them, they whip him until he's almost dead, and then they leave. Kinky. Despite this being a dream, the damage that's done is real. The Ulluth see it happening to him while he's asleep and freak out, thinking they should wake him up. But Fergus tells them to wait until he wakes up in his own time, because presumably Fergus arrived at some point. So when the vision is over, Helen wakes up, but when the Ulluth are like, dude, what happened to you? He can't answer them. He just shakes his head and asks to be taken to the sick bed in Teddy Breck. Maybe we should take you to Dundelga, where Eva is, says Loic, because ever is now mentioned. Cuchelan refuses and insists on being taken to this particular place. So they take him there and he spends a year in his sick bed and speaks to no one. Fast forward a year, he's still lying in bed, Ethna is sitting at his feet, Lugath of the red stripes next to his pillow, Fergus at his side and Connell at his head. So he has company. A man comes in and sits down, at which point Connell is like, yo, what are you doing here? And he's like, I'm here to talk to Cuchelan, obviously. And the man sings a bunch of verses at this point, the gist of which is that a woman called Fan is in love with Cuchelan, and that Liban can heal him if he'll agree to sleep with Fan. The man introduces himself as Angus, son of Aid Abra, and then leaves as quickly as he came. At this point, Cuchelan sits up and speaks for the first time in a year. What happened to you, the Ulleth say? I had a vision last Samhain, he says, and tells them about his dream. And he turns to Conqueva. What do I do now? Conqueva said, you need to go back to that standing stone. So Cuchelan takes his advice and goes back to the stone, and it's not clear whether or not he falls asleep, but Nevertheless, the woman in green appears to him again. Good to see you, Cuchelan, she says. Is it really, though? He says. I mean, like, the last time I saw you, you sort of beat me up and left me for dead, so, like, forgive me for not being thrilled about this whole thing. We didn't come to hurt you, says the woman, but to make friends. You have a really funny way of showing it, he says. I've come with greetings from Fand, daughter of Aid Avra. She used to be married to Mananan Maclear, but he's left her, and now she's in love with you. If you'll help my husband, Lavroth, fight against Senach the Unearthly, Yochav Yul, and Yogan the Stream, you can have her as your wife. My husband promises you this. In case you hadn't noticed, I'm not really well enough to fight says Cuchelan. You'll get better, she says, not just recovered, but stronger than ever, if you agree to this. Cuchelan thinks about this and then says, so where does your husband live? In Magmel, the plain of delight, she says, and now I gotta go. Okay, says Cuchelan, I'll send Loic with you and he can find out more about Magmel. So poor Loic therefore goes with Liban, who says to him, you know, you'd never be able to come here if you weren't under a woman's protection. And Loic is like, yeah, you know, that's not typically how I spend my time because being under a woman's protection is kind of a whole shame situation, but also because Loic is definitely gay. Just saying. And Liban goes, you know, it's a shame it's not Cuchelan who's here instead of you. And Loic, who got lumbered with this job without ever actually being consulted as to whether he wanted it, just goes, yeah, I'm with you on that one. I wish he was here too. So they come to a lake with an island in the middle and there's a boat of bronze lying there. So they use the bronze boat to cross to the island and come to the palace door where a man is waiting for them. He exchanges some verses with Liban before allowing them inside where there are 150 women reclining on couches. And they all tell Loic his welcome there. So, will you go and speak with Fand now? asks Liban. Sure, says Loic. Where is she? He's taken then to see Fand, who is apparently intensely beautiful, and she welcomes him. And meanwhile, Labyrinth arrives and Liban goes out to meet him, praising his military strength and his excellent rulership. And, but he's kind of 
down and sulky and her words don't cheer him up. It's not much good going on about how great a warrior I am, he says, when I can't win this war against Yokos Yule. Oh, don't worry about that, she says. Loik's here, you know. Kuchalan's charioteer. And Kuchalan is going to help you. This cheers Labyrinth up no end and he goes to greet Loik, telling him he's welcome for the sake of Liban who brought him there and for the sake of Kuchalan who sent him and yeah, we guess you're welcome on your own ground too, maybe. But it's time for him to go home and Liban will take him. So Loik goes back to Evan to tell Kuchalan what he's seen. At this point, this version of the story breaks off and we get a kind of slightly confusing intermission before it resumes, this time with Eva in her usual position as Kuchalan's wife rather than Ethna, which makes this an excellent place to break off part one of the video and I will be back imminently with part two. Part two is great. Uh, it has Eva yelling at Kuchalan and at the Ulov and at Fand and it's it's generally great. So I will see you very soon with that. In the meantime, if you have any questions, drop them in the comments. And remember that if you want me to keep making these videos, a great way to do that is to buy me a coffee. There is a link to my tip jar in the description, along with all my usual social media links. And I will see you soon. Slan!